In Tecla Power Fab 2023, now there is an incredible way to handle revision changes on your bill of materials. Clients will now get a better change management tool where they will be able to understand better what is being imported and being able to control it in such a better way. Although change management is one of the most difficult things to control in a project, in Tecla Power Fab, we develop our portion of the process in a way that it will make it very simple for those who want to partially or entirely utilize this tool. So let's dive in. After the person importing files went already through the file import in, into a specific job and selecting adding and replacing, the next screen will be the change summary. In this screen, we are summarizing all the information that is coming through and affecting existing revisions or existing assemblies in the job. As you can see, by default, this shows assemblies and their updates. Uh, we can also select here to see additions to see if there is any uh, extra assemblies that are coming through. As you can see, there, that's the case for this particular import. Uh, but I'll just go back to the updates to focus on explaining what you are seeing here on the screen. We're just basically removing everything else every single bit of information that was in the, in the import log and summarizing here what people should care about when doing an import on revisions. Now, we also understand, as we mentioned before, that for some companies, the people importing this file uh, cannot take the decisions of what should happen, uh, and that's fine. They can even just click continue and it will be business as usual. The software will be working in the same way that it was working before uh, the change management tool was in place. Uh, but this has a lot of advantages to consider. Uh, the first one in, I'll, I'll go through some of these scenarios to try to explain in some of the things that are happening in here, right? You can see that there are some assemblies with a red flag. What that means is that material, it will not be just updating the revisions or the changes that we are displaying in here. Like if you take a look here on the right, in this case for the assembly 1C3, uh, the change that it's taking place on is uh, there is a change in a piece mark, right, which that's probably not a big deal, but the biggest deal here is uh, the main piece, which it was a 14 by 99, it's changing to 14 by 120, and it's telling you here that we cannot just apply the change because it's been taken from the stock. We already got a 14 by 99 for that assembly. Uh, how we can see also those things, these middle columns are actually actionable buttons. If I click here on the tracking, it will show me what it's being completed for that assembly. I can see when that was taken from the stock, when that was cut, layout, weld, and any of the other process. If I close this out and, and click, for example, in the links, I will be able to see any material related that was already taken from the stock for this particular assembly. So in this case, it says yes, it's been taken from the stock and it's in red and it's by default safe for later, which means you, do, you will not have like before have to go and do the reverse DFS and then re-import the file. And then finally those changes will come through. What we are doing is putting this into a queue where you will be able later to take a decision as I'll show you in, in the next portion of this webinar. Uh, then and let me take a different scenario. If I go to this one here, it says uh, the 3V11, it has some links and the yes, it's in yellow. What that means is that some of the links for those materials may be affected when we perform this import. And as you can see here, what it's happening, it is the length is changing, right? It's changing from 37 feet, eight inches and one eight to 37 feet, nine inches and five sixteen. So the material, it's being affected. So that may be broken the links most for sure. So we are also saving that for later. So someone with the knowledge in purchasing can take the decision, but you can also uh, uh, prevent those changes of happening if you want to. Uh, there are a lot of these changes that are by default as allow. And that is because it, you know, it's just not affecting what it's been already done in those materials, right? Like in this 20 B9, even though it has some tracking information on it, uh, let's take a look of what it, it's been completed here. It looks like, most of the parts have been cut. Uh, but if I go and take a look of the details here, what it's happening it is the quantity is being reducing from five to four. So, right, uh, it's not really uh, changing sizes on, on the materials or grades or something that affects directly the property. So we are just by default allowing that change. Uh, but have in mind that all users have also the option to save for later, to take a decision for later or prevent some of those changes. Uh, now, one of the most typical scenarios I would say is uh, 
I may want to use, you know, every, anything that is being affected by materials, I may want to save those for later so the people in purchasing can go and take decisions of what to do in those. Uh, some of those, you know, are not a big deal, but some of those may be. You can see that in this scenario, uh, what it's happening, it's the length is being reduced. So it shouldn't be a problem, right? Uh, um, even if it's already cut, which we can actually analyze in here and see uh, it's not being cut, so it's, it shouldn't be a problem. That's why we are just by default allowing those changes, but you still have the option to prevent some of those. So just for to give you a, a different example, I'll actually go and select a few of these and, and say that I want to actually save those for later as well. Uh, other thing to pay attention is, is for some reason I want to flag any of those as hold. I have the option to do it individually, but I can also select several of those and then check this box and, and mark them as, as hold and, and at the moment of the import as well. Uh, one last thing that I want to mention here is uh, we we created an, an import report that it will be easier to read that the import log that is existing is still on the software. Uh, what we are doing by this is trying to enable a, an easier communication between the different departments and making this report relevant so everyone can go and see what it matters to them, as, as you will see here in just a minute. Now, lastly, but not less important, uh, have in mind that although I have several revisions in here, for some companies, there is hundreds sometimes of revisions that they are importing at the same time. So you can always use the navigation tree to guide this through and to make it easier for you, right? Like for example, if I wanna see exactly what has some tracking in production control, I can just click yes and then I see only the items that are gonna be affected in the fabrication process or the ones that are not being affected by that. Uh, we have also the options for filtering what has been taken from the stock, what has some shipping information, uh, what it's actually possible to make the change or what it will not be possible to change because it's been taken from the stock. There are different options for you here uh, to make it easier to navigate. And, and as usual, per, and in any navigation tree, you can just filter out by going to the top level. Uh, so I'll go, ahead, I'll go ahead and click the bill report and hit continue and wait for the report here to pop up. I'll just go through the usual pop-ups here and let the system go through. There are some items here that will be uncombined, which are usually the ones that were not in my purchasing standards or that are increasing the length. So I'll go ahead and, and select the option that you prefer. I always recommend uncombining them, but it's up to you. Uh, hit OK in the next pop-ups about the drawings and the CNC files missing. And then as you can see here, it's processing the report and it's also saving that report in the document index. So even if you forget to hit that box to view the report, every single report of every import, it will be stored in the document index of that particular job. So it will be very easy for companies to go and see the history of what it's been imported as new drawings or what it's been actually being applied as changes into some of those drawings. Now, finally, that's done. It's saved here. And let me just pull the report to this screen. It opened in my second screen. Uh, there we go. Uh, this report is different to any other report that we have done before. The first thing is have some hyperlinks because we understand that this report may be several pages, even though we are trying to summarize and make it easier for users to understand. Again, there are some imports that are so big for some companies that we want to make sure that the people go to the, to the area that they care for, right? Like for example, this is just a summary that presents the numbers of the drawings, assemblies, and NC files that were imported as new, that were changed, that went safer later, prevented or that were missing on the import. Now, if I am the purchasing manager, I may just only want to go and take a look of the materials affected, right? Then I see the materials that are probably, I have to go through this, each one of these parts and make sure that I understand what I need to do, right? That if, if I need to buy new material, if I need to uh, reutilize something of what I will be delivering or releasing from other parts, uh, it, it gives you just better tools to analyze that in, in, on purpose. If I go to the next version, it's updated and it just tells me every single thing that was updated that had the change the revisions and that it wasn't affecting something else. Like you can see here that 32B14, it's changing the finish from paint to unpaint, for example. So it's not that big of a deal. If I go to the save for later section, those are all the assemblies that I sent to the revision queue or pending changes. Uh, 
that it's, you know, those changes are waiting for, for me or for someone else in my company to go and take decisions, uh, which we'll, we'll see in the next in the next section. Now let's take a look into the next steps of change management improvements in Tecla Power Fab 2023. After the input has been completed, some of the changes were allowed and they are being applied already into the production control bill of materials. Some of the changes were also saved for later, which means there are actions to be taken in that job. So if I go to production control, the first thing that I wanna highlight here is that there is a new column that tells you which jobs have some changes to be approved by someone. So it's very easy to identify when there are actions to be taken in each one of those. Uh, before I go in there, I also real quick wanna show you that in the document index, the reports of the last imports that I have done are being stored. Every import that you perform will be safe in there. So you will have all the history to look at at any moment in time that you, that you need to. Let me close this and go back to open the job. And the first thing that is very obvious is that I have some pending changes. I can see that by this orange button here on the upper left corner. Uh, this can take me to the place where I can accept or deny some of those changes to happen. Uh, but before I do that, have in mind that you can also access that from the drop down menu, other options and review pending changes. Obviously you can create like in any other action, a, a hotkey that will take you to the same place. Uh, also, if I scroll down, here randomly on my production control job, you can see that some of the pieces that have some pending changes have been marked as on hold and have the status in the drawing as import hold. So uh, all of those things will be happening at the same time. Let me click on the review pending changes and you can see that this, lo this looks pretty much like if we are going through the import process again, but this time it's only for the pending items that we have still to take actions about. As before, the ones that are marked safe for later are the ones that I need to forcibly perform actions, right? Because some of those are the ones that, for example, were already uh, taken from the stock and the piece that it was taken from the stock is, is changing now, the, the size or the grade or something like that. So it's re uh, requesting me to do some changes. And as you can see in, under the options, I cannot allow those changes until I take some actions of those. So let's take a look at, for example, this uh, D33. It says that it's it's the grade that it's changing from A500 grade B all the way to A500 grade C, right? So if you know the material that I cut before, it doesn't work anymore. I need to probably buy some new material. I need to take some actions and remove that uh, link against the TFS that I have in production control. In the past, you will have need to go through inventory history, go to the TFS details, remove that, uh, you know, uh, and then maybe go through piece tracking, delete the, the information in there. So you will have to access to different screens. All those screens are going to be linked to this screen for you. So you don't have to leave the production control module to do any of those changes anymore, right? I can simply go here and say, all right, so let's take a look of what's been taken from the stock. Uh, it is the HSS here. I will actually reverse the TFS. So it, it will remove the, the link that I have against production control. But then it's asking me if I wanna take that back to inventory, if, if that's material that I can use for something else. If I say yes, then I will have a piece of uh, HSS A by A by 3 8 19 foot, 11 inches that will come back. If I say no, that will remain on the inventory history and it still will be cost of this project. So for this example, I'll go ahead and say yes, because that, let's say that that doesn't have plates welded to it or something like that. You can still use that material. So I'll go ahead and say yes reverse that TFS from here, and that's clean. I can also, for example, since I will need to fabricate that again, uh, I can go from here and say, let's take a look of the tracking information that I had completed for this. And as you can see, there are layout information, world information, quality control. So I can just go and pull the details from here. Uh, said I wanna remove that information. Delete that, so the record is clean now. I will have to fabricate that again. And then I can simply retry here to reload the information. As you can see, that kind of reloads and, and, and notice the changes that you have done. And then that option will be allow, uh, available for me to allow that change to happen. So uh, I'll keep that as allow. In this case, those were materials that I on purpose put as, put as safe for later. I can uh, check on them and save for later if I don't have the time now to check them still, but I will check those as allowed for now. And then I'll, I'll check one more just to give you a, an extra example. That 1C3, for example, uh, it is the piece that it's changing from 
14 by 99 all the way to 14 by 120. Uh, so let's take a look. I will probably need to refabricate that, right? Because it's it's changing a size. It's, there's nothing that I, I can really do about that. Uh, so I'll need to fabricate that completely and I need to purchase that material and all of that. So I'll go ahead and remove the tracking because that's for sure something that I will need to fabricate as well. So I'll go and uh, check the records, select some of those, delete, and then go again to the uh, TFS status that I have in here, go through the process of reverse the TFS, the plates, I don't need to reverse them, right? Because the quantity it's also, it looks like uh, it's changing the mark. That's what happened. So I, I will only reverse the, the main piece. Yes. And I don't want to say say back that to the inventory. Let's say as in this example, like that 14 by 99, probably have too many plates welded, uh, 200 holes on it. So there's not really useful material on it. I can say no at that cost will still remain part of the of the production control job. So remove that, uh, close this, uh, retry this to reload for information. And then you will see that now the option to accept that change is available. So I'll, I'll go ahead and accept those changes for now. Uh, but as you can see, there is all kind of information that you can access from here. One last example, just to not leave that one behind, is the shipping for materials that have been shipped. Uh, you can also from here access the load where that has been put. I can see that in this case, it's not been shipped, it's just been planned to be shipped in, in the load number two, so it doesn't really affect that, uh, but I will not uh, cover that case for now. So I'll go ahead and click, hit continue, and what it will happen is all those allow sections that I already authorized, it will now then go over and I will be able to go in through the process, you know, purchase my materials again. Uh, I'll have the, the latest information coming from the model updated on the screen and, you know, I can keep working as usual. So it's just trying to show you in a very simple way from one screen, how can you apply the changes? And again, the report, it's popping here into my second screen. So you can see the changes that now I accepted. Uh, it were five assemblies, just one drawing and eight are still remain safe for later for me to, to keep checking on those. Now, just to kind of finalize the point and, and improve what we have done, if I go and find the 1C3, which he was one of the assemblies that uh, it was uh, safe for later before, it is now not in hold anymore. It has the 14 by 120 now as the material that I need to buy. And as you can see, there is no links on it. So I can uh, simply go and, and combine this material and keep going with the purchasing and the fabrication of this assembly again.